In this week's video, we'll review the latest charts to help us answer the question, is extended sentiment being backed up by subtle deterioration on the charts? There's four main segments in the video, including two new studies. In the first segment, we'll see what we can learn from the big four. Sometimes subtle messages can be the most important messages in the markets. One subtle message on this chart, after this very, very strong period of outperformance in the NASDAQ relative to the S&P 500, basically lasted two and a half months, has been a relatively even match. It's possible that this ratio needed to consolidate its gains, and that's exactly what's happened here. This ratio has not rolled over, and in fact is starting to rise again. Now we're looking at the equally weighted S&P 500 index in ETF form, RSP. Some subtle takeaways here. We are significantly higher than the September high, which is where my cursor is. We're also higher than the intraday high that was made on Vaccine Monday or November 9th. On that day, you can see we closed well off the highs here. And now we've exceeded that high and closed above that high on more than one occasion. And all of that can be seen a little more clearly down in the smaller chart. Similar situation with the Dow. Here's that November 9th, big spike up intraday, and then we closed at basically the low of the session. We have closed above that intraday high, which is a positive. Lots of other positives on this chart. All of this consolidation for the most part in here occurred above the 61.8% and 50% retracements based on the A to B fall. In a similar and constructive manner, most of this consolidation here has occurred above a flattish and now trying to turn up red 200-day moving average. In the previous chart, we showed that RSP had cleared this intraday high from November 9th. This chart shows the Dow has cleared it. But as of the close on Friday, November 27th, the S&P 500 had not yet closed above that intraday high here from November 9th. This is the first day where the vaccine information came to light. The intraday high here was 3645. The close on Friday, November 27th, very, very close, but below at 36.38. All things being equal, we would prefer to see the S&P 500 close above this level here. On a more positive note, we had a new weekly closing high for the rally that was printed as of the close on November 27th. Also have somewhat of a consolidation and bullish breakout look on the weekly chart. And similar to the Dow, we're well above the June high, we're above the September high, and most of this consolidation, if not all of it, has taken place above the 200-day moving average. Triple Q is somewhat of a mixed bag. This is intraday on Friday. Still trying to make a clear break above this intraday high, and still trying to clear the September high here. The broader NASDAQ composite has checked both of those bullish boxes. The close on Friday, November 27th, basically the same as this intraday chart. It was up 111 points. You can see that's clearly above the intraday high on November 9th and clearly above the September high. And this is where it gets a little bit interesting. If we look at relative performance between September 2nd and November 25th, the S&P 500 equal weight index was in the lead. The Dow was second, followed by the S&P 500 or SPX. And then the NASDAQ was bringing up the rear. This type of relative performance seems to align with the news that came out on Monday, November 9th, relative to the vaccines. And thus, we might expect, if we looked at this chart here on the left between November 10th and November 25th, that it might look similar, that the laggards would start to lead and the previous leader might start to lag, which is exactly what we had between September 2nd and November 25th. Recently, we've seen a shift between November 10th and November 25th. 
The NASDAQ has retaken the lead, followed by equal weight S&P 500 and the Dow. It's just something good to be aware of relative to expectations here versus reality in recent weeks. It's hard to argue that the market leader off the low printing a new high here, exceeding this high and exceeding this high is bad news for the general market. Now let's see what we can learn from study number one. It's a monthly chart going back to the early 1970s of physical copper relative to physical gold. You can think of this somewhat as a risk on risk off chart from an economic perspective. Copper, which has more industrial and real world uses relative to gold that tends to be more of a hedging or defensive asset. The ratio is on the top of the screen. PPO, which helps us in this case with long term momentum is on the bottom of the screen. If we zoom in on the right side of the chart, we can see that monthly PPO rolled over and had a bearish cross roughly halfway through calendar year 2018 and recently experienced a bullish cross below the zero line. We were in bear mode with black below red for over 15 months. If we use 15 months as our standard, the 2016 case makes the cut this case here would not make the cut. Thus, it might be helpful to ask an answer. How many times has something similar happened since 1973? And that's looking at all of the data that we have. And how did the S&P 500 perform walking forward? The answer is five previous times. And for the most part, from a longer term perspective, stocks performed extremely well. 100% of the cases were higher six months later, one year later, two years later, three years later, four years later, and five years later. Keep in mind our signal was nailed down on October 31st of this year. Thus, drawdowns need to be calculated from the S&P 500's close on October 31st. And that's exactly what we've done here. It basically tells us it wouldn't be shocking, very, very similar to the drawdown studies that we covered in recent weeks. If the S&P 500 revisited the September low, or tested an upward sloping 200 day moving average. As always, that's not a prediction or a forecast. It simply helps us understand that historically, if an investor wanted to get to the right side of this table, they had to be willing to tolerate some pretty substantial drawdowns first. The moral of the story is very, very similar to the moral of the story in recent weeks. Something that recently happened in 2020 is telling us to keep an open mind about better than expected outcomes from a longer term perspective. Four years later in the historical cases, worst case, a gain of roughly 45% from the date of the signal. And the left side of the table helps us keep an open mind about 100% normal and to be expected volatility that occurs even within the context of the strongest bullish trends. Sentiment remains a popular topic and we'll cover it in study two. This video is being recorded on Friday evening, November 27th. It's not yet month end, but it is month end for this chart because this data is only released once a week. This is Sentiment, American Association of Individual Investors, Bulls minus Bears. We have data going back to 1987 and we're looking at all of it. As you can see, it's relatively rare to get sentiment all the way down here and then have it make it back to the green line. It's only happened five times since 1987. We were here in 1990, 1992, 2009, 2010, and we just experienced a similar move from the lows in 2020 to the recent high. Thus, it might be helpful to know how the S&P 500 performed in the four previous cases. Since we're not getting any new data between now and November 30th, we know what this chart will look like on November 30th, and that's the date of our signal. Thus, the table to the right tells us historically what it will be like walking forward from November 30th, 2020. Once again, we have very, very favorable performance. 100% of the cases higher one year later, two years later, three years later, 
four years later, five years later, six years later, seven years later, and eight years later. And we know from last week's video that it's a myth to say the stock market is always higher three to eight years later down the road. The moral of the story is similar in this case. History tells us even if good things happen from a longer term perspective, it won't necessarily be a walk in the volatility park over the next two to six months, helping us keep realistic expectations. The right side of the table helps us keep a longer term focus as long as the data allows. And that means as long as the chart in front of us looks healthy, we can maintain that longer term focus and longer term allocation. Also noteworthy, from a monthly perspective, sentiment is extended is a common theme. In the four previous cases, it became even more extended before it reversed, went even higher here, higher here, and higher here. Not a prediction in any shape, form, or fashion, simply looking at the historical perspective. How about drawdowns in the four historical cases? Since we don't know how the market's going to close at month end, we're using Friday's close of 36.38 to calculate these hypothetical drawdowns. In all four cases from the date of the signal, which would be 11.30, in our case, the drawdowns were relatively muted. The two-month drawdown on average was roughly 2%, the median a little over 1%. Looking out six months, very, very similar. One case saw an additional drawdown of 2%. What would that look like hypothetically relative to the close on November 27th? The answer is the four lines shown on the screen. In one case, we could go back hypothetically and tag an upward sloping 50 day moving average. And in the three other cases, the drawdowns were relatively muted relative to the close on November 27th. And these relatively muted historical drawdowns align with the fact that sentiment became even more extended in all four historical cases before it tended to reverse. We just said we could keep a longer term focus as long as the charts in front of us and the data that we have in hand allows. Therefore, it might be logical to take a look at the charts in front of us and see what we can learn. Do they align with or contradict the two studies that we just covered? Nothing particularly alarming here. Equal weight technology relative to bonds, IEF, making a new high for the rally. The same chart will be trying to nail down and hold a breakout on the weekly chart. You can see this looks discernibly different from Q1 of this year and Q4 of 2018. We've been talking about this chart for a long, long time. Finally, have a weekly breakout look intraday on Friday, November 27th. This is your typical risk off look here, rejected, risk off, rejected, risk off, rejected in Q1 of this year. This looks different from those three previous instances. Like any breakout, the longer it holds, the more important it becomes. Should be noted, after getting a similar breakout here above this high, this is after the election in 2016, these gains here were consolidated before the ratio took another leg up. This is GLD gold relative to the S&P 500 SPY. This is the bullish move here, A to B. We've retraced a lot of it and we're below the 38.2, 50% and 61.8%. We've also dropped below these areas of prior support. Hence, one of the reasons why we've been nailing down some profits in gold in recent weeks. This is what increasing fear looks like in February of this year. Price or the ratio above all of the moving averages. This is what we've looked like in recent weeks. This is almost a polar opposite look here relative to the look here. Ratio found support here, support here, support here. Now we're below the same upward sloping trend line during the day on Friday. Nothing particularly alarming yet on the chart of the VIX here. In fact, it looks 
pretty constructive in its present form. We know the longer a market goes sideways, the bigger the move that we can expect to get if we get a bullish breakout or bearish breakdown. In this case, it looks like we're getting a bullish breakout after three years of consolidation. And this box here aligns with the concept that we covered last week. If we take another look at the global Dow, price went absolutely positively nowhere for 12.7 years, telling us that stock market performance doesn't always look like this. The longer term outlook is not always favorable in the real world. You can also make an argument here that this is a bullish breakout. This is a form of a retest and now it looks like a successful retest. Similar concepts here this week, value line arithmetic. This looks like a bullish breakout in its present form. Value line geometric, November 24th, similar situation, trying to nail down a breakout. What we're really asking in this segment is, do we see evidence of increasing fear or evidence of increasing risk aversion? On the airline index, the answer is no. This is a constructive look. Similar concepts here, November 25th, small caps. This is a bullish breakout look after a long-term period of sideways consolidation. And in the short run, this chart may be even more important. This is small caps IWM relative to TLT. This too looks like a bullish breakout. However, we still haven't cleared this 61.8% retracement relative to this A to B drop. So we can still learn something in this area here. It's possible we bounce back from here and go back and test this breakout. The big chart here is November 25th. This ratio did drop a little bit on Friday, November 27th. You can pause your video player here, contrast the present day look with this concerning look of this ratio in Q1 of this year. Growth stocks versus bonds still holding a constructive bullish trend and breakout look. This is midweek. This is 10.18 a.m. on Friday, November 27th. This is also a long-term breakout look for IYM or basic materials. We are now above the Q1 2018 risk-off drop and well above the Q1 2020 risk-off drop. From a longer-term perspective, this is our full-bore bullish look. Price above both moving averages, the fastest moving average on top, and the slopes of both moving averages are up. It's exactly what we have in the present day. Bonds relative to stocks, closer to making a new low relative to making any type of important higher high. This is intraday on Friday, November 27th. Internet stocks relative to bonds printing a new high intraday for the rally. This is what today looks like. This is what the concerning Q1 look looked like. Credit markets, JNK relative to IEF. S&P 500 is rising down here. The ratio is falling. In the present day, the ratio has been rising. Bitcoin, GBTC in the ETF world, this is a little bit more concerning. This is somewhat of a failed breakout look here. We cleared this level intra-week and then we closed back below it. This chart is as of Wednesday of this week. Here's the look of the same chart Friday at 1025 Eastern Time. This is the same ratio. Now we're looking at a daily chart, Bitcoin relative to SPY. This is somewhat of a bullish breakout look on Monday of this week, exceeding this former point of resistance here. If we fast forward to Friday's session, we have more of a concerning failed breakout look here. Also noteworthy that this ratio peaked a few weeks before the S&P 500 did. This ratio peaked on December 18th here in 2017, the S&P 500 had an intermediate term peak several weeks later on January 26th. Not a forecast, just something to keep in mind relative to whether this breakout eventually succeeds 
or fails. If we look at GBTC or Bitcoin in isolation, it looks a little bit more constructive. Former resistance here, the close was 1688 in 2018. 2019, this closing high here was 1708. On Friday's session, the low was 1760 above both of those levels. So you can make an argument that this is a bullish breakout and this is somewhat of a retest here. And right now, it's holding. It's also possible that it's going to come back and retest this upward sloping trend line here. That would take you all the way back to 15 and change. And it's also possible that it could come down and try to fill all of these gaps, including this gap all the way down here at 1102. Always a good idea to have an exit strategy for failed breakouts. We really don't have a failed breakout look on this chart, but if we look at a lot of the relative charts, Bitcoin was breaking out against almost everything on Monday of this week. Now a lot of those ratio charts look like failed breakouts, telling us that it's pretty smart to have a game plan for the possibility of a failed breakout here. Hasn't happened yet. Right now, this still looks pretty constructive. And you can see here, we closed well off the session low on Friday. On any chart, it's always good to have a game plan for what happens if we move in this direction? What happens if we move in this direction? And what happens if we go sideways for a long period of time? Really don't care what happens. We just want to manage it properly. This is another chart we've been looking at for a long, long time. Triple Q's failed relative to gold here. This is a risk off look. Failed here, risk off look. Failed here, risk off look in Q1 of this year. Hard to make an argument that this is not discernibly different from all of those scenarios that we just covered. Right now, this chart looks constructive and tends to align with all of the studies that we've been covering since early April of this year. Similar situation here, but not as confident. It's a little more hesitant here, but still making a new high and still more importantly, holding the breakout above the areas of former resistance, including Q1 of this year. The same ratio triple Q's relative to TLT still has a positive momentum look similar to the look here in 2016 after that good things happen for a long period of time in the ratio. In summary, based on the facts that we have in hand today, we really don't have anything that's telling us that our allocation is inappropriate and we don't have anything that tells us that we should shift gears away from a longer term focus. We may see meaningful deterioration very, very soon or sometime in the next few weeks or months, but it hasn't happened yet. The historical studies cannot predict the future. The charts cannot predict the future. They simply help us assess the probability of good things happening relative to the probability of bad things happening. And we know with 100% certainty that at some point in the future, meaningful deterioration is going to occur. That's just the way it works in the markets. Gains are always followed by painful giveback periods. Thus, we know the only way that we can properly adjust and trade the chart in front of us is to head into next week and every week with that flexible, unbiased, and open mind. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities or any related financial instruments, nor should any of its content be taken as investment advice.
Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management LLC or CCM is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.